Good morning. I am Jeff Evenson, Chief Strategy Officer for Corning Incorporated. It's my pleasure to welcome you to our unveiling and also to welcome you to the Glass Age. I'd like to begin this morning by explaining what we mean by Glass Age. Glass is arguably one of the most transformative materials in history. It spawned numerous revolutions, from the telescope, which expanded our understanding of the universe, to glass lenses and picture tubes, which created major shifts in popular culture, to the invention of optical fiber, which ushered in a communications revolution. Today, glass is becoming even more relevant to a broad range of industries. That's because innovators are increasingly recognizing its unique properties and its role in solving tough challenges. In fact, we believe that glass components can be to the next 50 years what silicon components have been to the last 50 years. Here in Corning's booth, you'll see how we're bringing to life a few technologies that we originally contemplated in our video, A Day Made of Glass. Our exhibits include a home collaboration hub, which enhances communication and improves productivity, an office collaboration hub, which facilitates the interchange of ideas and dissolves distance. A fitness mirror that provides real-time feedback and lets you customize your workout. And of course, the glass-enabled concept car that we'll unveil momentarily. I'm particularly excited that we're highlighting a car this morning. The automotive industry is a great example of a market where advanced glass can enhance form and function while addressing critical industry needs. Today, those critical needs include not only better handling cars, but cars that are cleaner safer and more connected. In addition, cars capture our imagination like nothing else. Since the first automobiles hit the road, people have been dreaming up new capabilities, whether it's the DeLorean in Back to the Future or the Jetsons flying cars. Now, when people think about early innovators in the automotive industry, names like Gottlieb Daimler, Daimler Carl Benz, Henry Ford come to mind. But maybe that list should start with Leonardo da Vinci. In 1478, he created detailed sketches of a self-propelled cart. He designed it as a festival attraction to inspire wonder and awe. But like many of his ideas, it confounded people for centuries. In fact, it wasn't until 2004 that Italian engineers created a vehicle based on the sketches, and it worked. I like that story because it's a great example of the transition from magic to science. By that, I mean that capabilities that defied explanation other than magic at one time eventually get explained by science and reduced to engineering practice. That journey from magic to science has been one that we've been on with glass too. For years, people were mystified by the ability of glass to reflect images, to refract light, or to change color in different situations. Innovation only happened because of laborious trial and error experimentation, or occasionally just plain serendipity. But today, we understand how different formulation and fabrication techniques determine the atomic state and structure of a glass, which in turn allows us to precisely tune the properties of a glass for specific applications. That's why the pace of glass innovation has increased so dramatically in recent years. It's why we can make large sheets of glass that are flexible, glass that can withstand the impact of steel balls, glass that suppresses the growth of bacteria, mold, and fungi, glass that's responsive to the human touch. The good news, we're just getting started. So far, scientists have combined silica with about 50 elements from the periodic table. But the true potential is to incorporate almost the entire periodic table. And to understand that potential, just think about holding the Oxford English Dictionary in your hands and how many different words you can make from only 26 letters. It's that, that vast potential that leads us to believe some of the biggest innovations of gla in glass still lie ahead of us. Now, Leonardo's self-propelled cart never made it to market.
Today, automotive companies are already incorporating some exciting applications based on advanced glass. And at Corning, now that we've made the transition from magic to science, we're trying to take that science and turn it back into magic by unleashing a new range of capabilities that can improve our lives and enrich our experiences. So, without further ado, let's take a look at how Corning is using advanced glass to redefine the concept of the car. Gentlemen. I hope that you feel the sense of wonder and awe about the possibilities that could be part of your everyday life in the very near future. Thanks. With that, I'd like to invite Doug Harshberger up. Doug leads our automotive effort and is going to take us through some of the features of the car. Really excited to be here to share with you Corning's vision of what the next generation of cars and integrated connective smart cars can be. This is the Corning One. It has a ton of great technology in it. And I'm going to walk you through what a few of them are. But before I do that, can I just get a simple show of hands? How many of you are already familiar with Gorilla Glass as a material? OK, so that's great. So the, the basic origins of our work in the automotive space started with Gorilla Glass. Started with the idea that we could take this cool, strong, tough material and find a way to use it to make better cars. The reason we thought we could do that is because we were aware that around the industry, uh, regulators were requiring automakers to improve fuel economy and reduce CO2 emissions. And that one way to do that was the same thing we had done in, this, in the mobile phone space, which is make the devices thinner and lighter. And so the very first thing we tried to do was to take that Gorilla Glass technology and use it to make glazing, windows that are thinner and lighter, and thereby deliver weight savings and fuel economy. But in addition to just the weight savings and fuel economy, we knew it would also reduce the center of gravity in the car that would allow the car to handle better, it would allow it to accelerate and stop faster. Many other benefits might come along, come along the way. The reason that we were able to do that is because Gorilla Glass is based on two fundamentally unique technologies from Corning. The first one is our fusion forming process, which allows you to make glass that's very thin, very clear, defect free, and very damage resistant. The second is our formulation for the glass, or the composition. It's also unique to, Cor to Corning. It allows for a chemical strengthening process that makes the, the glass extremely durable and scratch resistant, also allowing you to have a, a greater toughness. And our idea was that you could take the additional toughness that we have, trade it in for thickness, and end up with a window that could be lighter. And actually, uh, there are a couple of examples over here. There's one standard window, small size, and one uh, gorilla-enabled window that's lighter weight. If you hold one in each hand, you should be able to see uh, one's quite a bit lighter than the other. You got it. Good answer. <laughs> that's, that one's about one-third lighter. And the way we did that was we took a normal construction, which has two thick pieces of glass. We took away one thick piece of glass and replaced it with one thin piece of gorilla glass. The goal being to make a window that's just as tough and durable, everything that you need for a car, but also lighter weight. And it was about one third lighter weight. The interesting thing that we found along the way was that maybe we overshot the mark a little bit. We learned a way to make these windows that not only made them lighter, but also made them even tougher than the windows, the thick windows that were already in the car. In fact, uh, the windshield that's on this car, which is built like the, the Gorilla Glass sample that's over there, is two times more resistant to damage from sharp stone impact than a traditional thick window. How many of you would like to have a window that's much less likely to break when it gets hit by a rock or a stone? Yeah, so I would too. I have a couple of um, recent breaks in windows that don't yet have Gorilla Glass in my driveway at home. But um, this car, this window right here, this windshield was made um, with exactly that construction and is exactly uh, two times better for a sharp stone impact. Another interesting thing about this windshield is that it was made by a company that uh, we recently formed specifically for the purpose of bringing this technology to market. The company's name is Sangoban Corning Auto Glazing, and it's available and ready today to make these windows for production vehicles. 
So with that as basic background, what I'd like to do is sort of walk around the car and talk about some of the advantages of the windows. I already talked about the lightweight and toughness in the windshield. We also have used that same technology in the side windows. So they're lighter and they're tougher as well. Maybe a little less important that they're tougher in a side window than in a windshield. But the other interesting thing about the side window is that Gorilla Glass's toughness and flexibility allows us to make these windows in what we called a cold forming process. That means that we can take a flat piece of Gorilla Glass, laminate it to a curved piece of soda lime glass, and get the window shape that you want without actually having to put the Gorilla Glass into a furnace and melt it into the shape. So it makes the manufacturing process simpler and easier. Moving around to the back side of the car here, you'll see two other windows, uh, the backlight and the roof, roof glass here. Both of these also lighter and tougher, but we've integrated another interesting technology into those windows. They both have sandwiched between the piece of Gorilla Glass and Soda Lime Glass a film that allows you to change the level of uh, tint in the window. So you'll see later that we can make it go from light to dark with a, a touch of a button. So that's it. These, these windows together save in the vehicle about 40 pounds. And I don't, I don't know if that sounds like a lot of weight in a vehicle. That's a lot for, in this vehicle because it's an ultralight vehicle. But just to illustrate it, I've got a couple of dumbbells over here. Not this guy here. I mean these things on the, uh, on the floor here. So one of them is the weight of a windshield. One of them is the weight of a roof. And if you hold all of them, that's about the weight of all the cars. That uh, So can I get one of you guys to pick these things up and see? Uh, so this is the Yeah, the windshield in this car, that's the amount of weight saved in the windshield. Yeah, that's the weight saved in the, uh, the rest of the windows. Pretty significant. 40 pounds is quite a lot, so we're pretty happy with that, and it obviously delivers a bunch of benefits. So maybe with that, we'll go, Jeff, do you want to go inside the sure. car? We'll demonstrate some of the stuff that's inside there. Maybe before we go into all of the features that are inside the car, I'll say one more thing about the windshield. This windshield is built specifically to enable better images and head-up displays. This car actually has a head-up display for the driver and for the passenger. But another thing that Gorilla Glass can deliver, because it's so thin and optically clear, is a better image coming from a, a HUD. The reason is because HUDs are, are built on a, a principle of reflected light and the light reflects off of the inner surface of glass and the outer surface of glass. And that naturally creates um, a distortion in the image that you see. That distortion can be corrected by putting a, a film in between the two pieces of glass that corrects it, but you can never correct it perfectly and for all viewing angles. And by making a glass in a window that's thinner and clearer, you can increase the range of areas where you can get a really sharp, crisp, clear image. Ours can be about three times larger with the same level of clarity as a standard window, standard thicker window would be. So that's, uh, that's what you see on the windshield. Jeff, how does that HUD look inside there? Very sharp. That's good. I don't think we can get a good image of it from the camera up here, but a lot of the things you'll be seeing inside the car, you'll be able to see on the uh, display up here behind the car. So Jeff, let's talk about a few of the uh, other interior elements. This car itself is built to bring your mobile phone experience into the car. And so it's a very display rich and dynamic environment. In addition to the two head up displays, it's got an all glass dash with multiple displays in it. It's got a center console display. It's got displays in both of the doors and also a display in the steering wheel. All of these are configurable so you can turn the car into the look and feel that you want inside the car. Jeff, why don't you show how you can configure the passenger view uh, with the touch screen in the middle? So Jeff's going to use a simple touch on the center console and put a video onto the segment of the display that the passenger is able to see. You can see the rest of the display has a, a map function as well as the, the regular um, uh, instrument cluster that most drivers will need. Jeff, you can also use that center console to change the tint of the roof and the backlight. Why don't you show how that works as well? Can you get a, a shot of the roof changing color? Okay, one more time. Yeah, so you can see it goes from light to dark with the touch of a button. So all of the displays that are built onto the inside 
have some sort of optical surface on them to enable all of the occupants to see and use them without being distracted by glare from ambient lighting around. So the all-glass dash has an anti-reflective coating on it, and the center console and the um, uh, steering wheel display have anti-glare treatments on them. Those anti-glare treatments have the additional benefit of suppressing some of the look of fingerprints so the display looks better all the time as well. Maybe we want to try out the um, uh, uh, steering wheel display and show what it can do. You want to turn the right turn signal on? Okay, so you can see the right turn signal going on again with a simple swipe of a display that's really convenient and close to your hands, making the working of the vehicle all the more simple. You'll also notice that um, uh, the rear light there has accent lighting that's made with an, another Corning technology. That's Corning's Fibrance fiber optic lighting. In fact, there are several places around the vehicle that the headlight, uh, the door panel, the steering wheel, the backlight, all of which are accented with functional lights made with Fibrance. Uh, the Fibrance serves a, a decorative purpose, but it also does some kind of function. In the case of the one up here in the, um, in the headlight, uh, it allows you to monitor the level of charge of the vehicle while you're charging it. So if you're outside your car, you've got your electric vehicle plugged in, you can see using the light how, how much charging it has had already. So Jeff, what do you think about the inside of that vehicle? Pretty cool, huh? Love it in my car. Okay, so kind of in summary, this vehicle is meant to illustrate Corning vision about how you can make a cleaner, safer, smarter, better driving connected car. It's got a host of uh, technologies in it. I mentioned the light weighting and the toughness about the glazing, the optical features of the multiple touch sensitive displays. We have fiber optic lighting. There are a few other technologies that are enabled by different uh, uh, Corning glasses. It's got OLED lighting in the door panel and of uh, both sides as well as an OLED brake light in the bottom that's made with uh, OLED light. It also has uh, LCD screens in both the front and rear license plate. So that's a more traditional Corning technology. We make many, many uh, glasses for LCD screens. I'm not so sure what you need a configurable license plate for, unless you're a thief or something like that. But uh, um, we think with the advent of cars that will be shared, many people using, maybe there's another uh, feature that could be used in the future there as well. So in summary, like I said, this is Corning's vision for a connected car with all of the technologies that uh, Corning's glass can enable that we can imagine today. Obviously, we, we think there'll be many, many more in the future, but the good news is I've got a bunch of people here in the room around who'd like to engage and talk with you about them. We've got a bunch of displays around the rest of the booth here. And uh, I know our chief innovation officer, Marty Curran, is here. Um, the folks who lead the different business units are here. And so I'd like to invite you all, after the conclusion of this, to join us here in the booth and go through some of the displays on these sens touch sensitive tables, which have videos and some of the other stuff around the room. So with that, thanks. And I'd like to invite you to join us in the, the rest of the presentation.